<laughs> hey, hello everyone. This is Gopal. Uh, I hope folks are uh, adjusting to this new norms of attending the virtual conferences. Not sure of much of this networking really happens. This virtual conferences. I used to go to a lot of conferences with all this uh, things which happen around the world. So now we are coping with the virtual conferences now. So I am here to discuss about one of the use case we dealt in uh, rewards organization in Capitalone as uh, modeling financial data in uh, Cassandra to serve real time and batch workloads at the same time, right? This is one of the pattern we have followed. So we will get into the details uh, in the talk. So before we dive into the details, some details about me. So I'm Gokul Prabhaharan, engineering manager at Capital One. So if you have used or owned any of credit, credit card from Capital One, my team is actually responsible for providing the earn you are supposed to get for uh, the swipes you made. Like if you go to Starbucks and you bought a coffee and depending on type of the card you used and type of the place where you are swiping, so how much of earn you are supposed to get and all those things is computed by a big platform and I, I am part of the platform which is called Rewards. And I have been building applications from initial versions of uh, Java and Apache Spark. I am pretty much to the distributed computing space and I have written multiple medium blocks for Capital on Tech, especially in the area of big data technology. And I have provided my social handles for anyone who wants to connect through LinkedIn, Twitter, or Medium, if you want to reach out. So we'll start with the agenda. First, we will see a quick intro on Apache Cassandra. I know I, because I'm not sure on the first of the audience on what level we have the audience. So I just thought I'll just quickly glimpse over the Apache Cassandra and what are its benefits and some information about it. and how Apache Cassandra's data modeling primarily differs from RDBMS. And pretty much this talk is mostly around the same area. And we will see about the rewards architecture at a very high level and what's the use case we have dealt in rewards in Capital One and how we have leveraged Cassandra's data modeling specifically for solving a pattern which in turn solves real-time use case and also batch use case and leaving some room for Q&A at the end. So let's start with some reflection on Apache Cassandra. So Apache Cassandra is one of the top NoSQL database, probably Mongo, maybe another one is widely used. These two probably makes up the entire or, or majority of the the NoSQL market space and Apache Cassandra is widely known for its blazingly speed read queries and how we uh, come up with the consistency and all those things together. Apache Cassandra also makes up a, a, a top NoSQL. And it was uh, first built by Facebook engineers and later they open source that and DataSex is the company which offers the enterprise grade Apache Cassandra and we do use that and DataStax is the company behind that. Right, I believe most, most of the folks are pretty much familiar with the ACID property which is widely popular and used in RDBMS, right? And CAP theorem forms the similar base for the next generation of NoSQL database which came after RDBMS, which took over the internet and mobile era, right? What CAP theorem is? CAP theorem states that consistency, availability, and partition tolerance, and out of these three, you will be able to achieve only two. That's what CAP theorem dictates, right? And Cassandra focuses pretty much on availability and partition tolerance with eventual or uh, some say tunable consistency, right? So let's say your application is writing some data and you have a use case to read it immediately right 
there are two types of consistencies one read and write consistency and depending on whatever the, your use case is let's say when to consider your write has made it right so whether it has made it to the one disk or I mean, one node or, or the entire availability zone or all the nodes in the cluster right that dictates your write consistency and if your use case is okay in fetching the data from one of the node then your read consistency probably is one or if your use case requires very strong consistency you can go for local quorum or even a stricter consistency but local quorum pretty much is solves a lot of this cases where the writes has made it to majority of the nodes in the local data center and apache cassandra doesn't follow most mostly a lot of times in rdbms or even in the nosql space this this is widely used to pattern in uh, uh, database space like primary and secondary being uh, one node which takes the writes or uh, there is a uh, async replicas right those kind of things are the patterns widely there but uh, cassandra doesn't follow primary or secondary all the nodes are the same in cassandra the one of the node acts as the coordinator which avoids actually a single point of failure for any of your writes and cassandra is is known to be a column or data storage right what it means is you define your partition key and that is the key which holds the entirety of your row and if you want to fetch a particular tier column and that that's how you fetch your information out of the uh, this right so that is typically called as partition key in cassandra and uh, comparing with rdbms cassandra doesn't follow any joins or the suggestion is you have to actually denormalize your data and sometimes you probably may have to duplicate your data depending on how it is actually fetched right this this particular point is actually what makes up this whole talk is about and we will get into the details of that and it pr primarily differs from rdbms in this space what that is called is use case driven data modeling right the main difference we will get into the detail in the next slide how it differs from rdbms is actually its data modeling in any typical sql world or rdbms world right you define your table schema on your application and data needs and you come up with the schema and your application persists the data and let's say there is a new use case coming up and you have to fetch the data out of your uh, table in a, a different way right most of the times you may not have to change any table schema and your application able will be able to fetch the data even if it is using a different pattern but cassandra it's exactly done in opposite way you have to start with table design that's what i mean by use case driven data modeling or your consumption pattern what defines your partition key and that is the only way you will be able to fetch the data out of cassandra and that's how it gets persisted in the disk as well right that the partition key forms a primary role in whole cassandra ecosystem and that's how data gets partitioned in the disk and that's what we are calling it as query driven or use case driven data modeling so you define a particular key and that key is the way in which you will be able to fetch your data out of cassandra let's say a, a, a simple example which which is somewhat a abstracted uh, view of one of our table let's say it's called as customer transaction and that table is partitioned by uh, account number right so you will be able to retrieve the data out of this table using only account number let's say for some reason there is a need arises and you have to fetch it say a customer customer whom our has customer account 100 right for that use case all of a sudden if there is a change then you may you may need to come up with a different key and 
you may need to duplicate the data whomever is producing the data and you need to come up with a different key and that table will be used for that particular use case in case if you move ahead and use this table itself as a table for that use case that is considered actually an anti pattern in cassandra the reason is it has to fetch data from all the nodes which is which is typically a table scan which is inefficient let's get into the rewards use case at a high level what we uh, what we have in capital one right capital one is the first us bank which existed out of legacy on prem data centers we have gone all in cloud uh, in turn last year in 2020 we made it a, a public declaration that we have completely exited out of uh, data centers now all our workloads everything runs on public cloud and we develop everything open source and cloud native this application which is a abstracted view of our application is completely built on cloud native technology ground up and that is what actually serves each and every transaction of capital and credit card consumers right what 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 the rewards use cases let's say you are making a swipe and that swipes are uh, aggregated and provided to us or even sometimes even we do the authorization let's 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 assume that that swipes are what i am representing as transactions here and there is various of computation which happens behind the scene and and output of that is how much of earn you are actually getting out of those transactions and that gets persisted in mongo and cassandra backends and these two data stores actually forms the base for the use cases we are going to see right typical use cases which are very widely common in any of the credit card uh, cases most of us are credit card users in uh, us and we we probably would have uh, logged into any of your uh, credit card provider home page mobile and we typically get the statements every month and these two are the use case we are going to see how in the back end we have designed the cassandra tables to solve for these two use cases together right let's get into the use cases first we will start with the real time use case where let's say you have made a swipe and you are you are you are getting a 10 dollar earn for the transaction you are you are you made and you are you are trying to view right that's the one of the typical uh, credit card use case where customer log in to view their rewards or their balance or 30 days or 90 days transaction all those things right when that happens most of the times the need is actually to serve the customer in real time right those kind of queries actually needs to be blazingly fast because we we are we are serving the customer in real time right so for those kind of tables like i have given an example here which is which which will go in details on how one of the particular example comes together let's assume that uh, customer earn transaction is the table which is what we have we have used in the back end for this kind of use case so how we have determined the key right for this kind of use case we need to be quick to find out the data and that's what actually cassandra is known for when you know the exact key you will be able to fetch the data in milliseconds so for this particular real time use case it has to be customer account driven key so going with the same example customer earn transaction where customer swipes are uh, captured and when customer is trying to see how much rewards they got for their transaction on that day we are we are we have defined the key as customer account right then customer 1 2 3 made some transaction on for 100 dollars and they got 20 dollars as uh, rewards when they log in to their uh, their account mobile web or any means 
then they will see that their their actual transaction at that point is 100 bucks and they got 20 dollars as a rewards and this is how the real time use case for the uh, for the table structure the back end right just extending the same use case for for statements right where the data needs to be aggregated and also there is not an inherent need to immediately service the customer because this information is most of the times is aggregated and for those kind of use cases we actually need to have some time frame attached so that we can aggregate and also we can find out what has happened at the specific point in time right for those kind of use cases it is as i said it's mostly aggregated for those kind of use cases it always or how we have done is you go with the account number and also some time frame attached to that so that's how in the back end when when information gets persisted for both these use cases we have to keep in data in sync and what happens for this particular statements use case we have attached a customer account number with a time frame so both this use cases are always kept in sync by the process when when the data is produced right so if 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 we just follow the same pattern we we will go ahead and drive home this uh, example using a, a numerical case right let's say python customer python goes to starbucks and makes a swipe for 100 dollars and they are earning a rewards of 10 dollars right how with this same use case how it is represented in the back end so there are two three three tables we are we have come across in this talk one is customer transaction customer earn transaction and customer trans earn transaction this three, right customer makes a swipe and they 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 made a swipe for 100 dollars and they got 10 dollars and in the earn transaction we are showing that customer python has on that point of time has got 10 dollars rewards since since at that point they their daily and also their aggregated is same because they got only 10 dollars at that point in time so the table where we maintain the real time use case and also for future aggregated use case both are same at this point of time let's say customer python is like me who drinks lot of coffee has gone to the shop again next day and made or bought the same coffee so 100 dollars 10 dollars again rewards on the next day so if you see the table customer earn transactions now the customer's total earn has gone to 20 dollars and but their daily earn is staying at 10 dollars reason is at that point how much they have actually earned on that day is 10 dollars but how much aggregated earn they have is 20 dollars from their two transaction and when customer logs in to see how much they have the customer earn transaction is the table which is used so it shows that they have 10 20 dollars as their rewards at the same time on customer earned transaction history we are capturing the information which has happened at that point in time so we know that how the 20 dollar we arrive right it is two transactions of customer which is 10 dollar each so we have the history of that but it also has the timestamp attached there so when when we keep these two in sync for monthly statements we just go and pull this information out of this and we will be able to provide their how their earn was arrived so that's pretty much wanted to cover for uh, this so if, if there are any questions definitely i'll, I'll uh, try to address and uh,
watching your wallet that's our tagline i mean if you if, you, if anyone is interested from whatever you heard like we we if uh, you are hiring reach out to me in linkedin or twitter or any of my social handles and we are we are uh, the platform which uh, this is actually from the the platform which we have developed ground up and the cassandra forms the main data source in the back end for us 